So you join me here by the Ramada and the church and Riley's Radio Plus and uh, function room and uh, soon to be a big tower block that twists round. Uh, that'll be interesting on the corner. But in the distance, you should be able to see one of the well, two of the spires uh, in front, directly in front, um, St Michael's Cathedral in front of us. Um, and today's story is going to be about the Blitz, so I'll uh, keep walking. You may be thinking, oh, you've left the city centre, why are you going to talk about the Blitz? Well, today I'm going to try and do a, like a personal story of my family and what they were doing at the time. Um, I just tried to ring my nan to get, uh, to get some accurate facts and to cross-check what I'm going to say, but uh, I think she's having lunch, uh, so I will try again in the interim, but um, I know Grandad's story very well, so I can uh, tell that one a bit later on. Um, my nana's story is the first one up, and she lived in Chapelfields, which is where I'm walking to. Um, so we will, you know, find out more as we go. Plus, this is a test for my uh, phone. I'm filming this in 4K 60. No idea how long this is going to take to upload, but hopefully by November the 14th, which is the 80th anniversary of the Blitz. Um, I'm filming it without a filter. Uh, some pretty standard settings. I don't have a gimbal. I'm just holding the phone um, So we'll see as we go Well on the way is obviously Spon End a very historical place the Sherbourne's just there where that bridge is and then you've got this row of um, I guess they're Victorian uh, Buildings before you get to the, the rail bridge um, but Spon End, obviously, very historical. Uh, some of the oldest buildings in the city are still there. Weaver's Cottages, which the council were going to get rid of in the 70s. Absolutely ludicrous idea. Along with everything else that was Victorian and older, they just wanted to strip it all away. Um, yeah, so I'm yeah, going past the railway. And there was a famous story about this bridge. I think um, there was a, an accident or something probably about a hundred years ago. That'll be a different video. I haven't got the energy to research everything. Um, but we'll pick this up again shortly. It's very quiet in Chapel Fields today. I mean this street has like four or five pubs on it normally. Open and buzzing but not today. So I'm here on a very quiet Lord Street outside the Craven Arms. There's like four pubs just round the corner and it's deathly silent as you'd expect in lockdown, everything is shut. Um, but I'm here on Lord Street in Chapelfields. Now, what was Chapelfields famous for? That's a fun question that I'll have to answer because you can't reply. But watchmaking is the answer. Um, and my family, well, Nan's family, moved here because they were watchmakers. Um, and this is Lord Street where uh, my Nan, aged 10, lived during the Blitz, which is not far, you know, it's like a mile away from town. Um, so, um, well, I think my Nan lived in the one next to the big house on the corner. I'm not going to stand outside and film somebody's house because they actively live in it, but it was this street. Anyway, watchmakers' cottages. Um, loads of watchmakers in Cov, that's what we were famous for when everything else fell in. And you can sort of see the style of the buildings. There's a lot of those big workhouse type buildings. And um, it's funny because there's a lot of them when they were renovated, they had to, they took out all the floorboards and burnt them because there was gold. Uh, dust uh, from the watchmaking. So there's a lot of gold in Chapelfields <laughs> in the roofs. Probably adds to the house value. Um, I'm coming back towards the old road now, but uh, th there's people doing delivery, so I can't really stand and chat outside the house. They asked me if I was lost, and I'm not lost. I'm just trying to do a video. 
Uh, so I'll stand here underneath this great tree. So, yeah, 1940, Nan was here. Uh, obviously all the houses were escaped. Um, but the bombers would, would fly this route after uh, unloading on the city centre. They flew past and uh, Nan has a great story of when she went to school once and she saw in the morning as the bombing raids came to a close a, a stray bomber unloading nearby. And uh, she he unloaded his machine guns in the, in the roofs of all, all the buildings. And she uh, ran all the way home uh, to tell her, you know, mom, and she was scared. But uh, she was sent back to school, and the teacher, when she got there, told her off and said, "Why well, are you late for? But don't do that again." So that was the uh, 40s spirit for you. Um, and I think she saw a number of bombers and, and raids and, and different things. At 10, she's got a pretty good memory of it. Whereas the story of my granddad is quite a bit younger. Um, it's a different one, but a bit more dramatic, I suppose. Uh, she, it's funny, because Nan always goes on about it when she lived in sheltered living. Um, a lot of the old dears with her uh, were from, like, Leamington and Rugby and other Warwickshire places, and they always go on about, oh, we could see Coventry burn from where we were and she was like why didn't you come and help us then um, <laughs> as she uh, was a mile away watching it all unfold I think my her dad uh, and brothers obviously helped out um, as wardens and, and, and sorting things out and trying to help people and obviously at 10 she was uh, kept away from active helping however uh, my granddad who she married uh, he's from Ireland, so I don't think he cared much about Britain. But he was a spotter on the roof of Elvis, which is, well, Elvis Park is now Morrison's on the Holyhead Road. But it was obviously a big factory and he was a spotter with a lamp looking for bombers and, and planes. Uh, so he did that during the war. And he was a builder by trade, so he helped rebuild London and carve and everywhere else afterwards. But, yeah, during the 1940 Blitz he would have been on the roof of Elvis spotting and trying to find them just before they got to the city centre to raise alarms and such like. I'm back to the start now, there's the four P's on Craven Street and there's another four, five pubs up this road in Chapelfields. But yes, home of watchmaking. There's a great watchmakers... Well, we've got the watch museum in town, but when I was at school you could go to one of the watchmaker houses further on uh, Old Ballsfield Road. Uh, it was the partnership centre. I don't even know what happened to that, but that was very interesting. Um, learned about that. And that will do for this clip, I think. It's four minutes long. It's ludicrous. But yeah, Nan lived there on that street, Lord Street. Heard it all unfold. And um, if I can, I'll try and add in some photos and bits and bobs. But we'll see how bothered I am about editing. I suppose whilst I'm here, old dyers, if you ever need a, a, an old biker, that's the place to go. My uh, uncle, who is about 70, oh, 72, 71, all right, don't know what that's about. Um, he's always in there. I don't think he even knows who I am, to be honest, but um, still rocking the sort of foot and a half of grey, long hair. Um, I don't, I think he's still got a bike, but I don't know how much he actually rides it, but yeah, you'll usually find him in there, which is, uh, you know, people look at me and the rest of my family and go, how did this even happen? And it's often a, a thought that I have as well. So I'm walking back into the city centre under the ring road by the Sky Dome and I'll pick up Grandad's story which I know much better. Um, unfortunately the road he grew up on uh, is no longer there but I'll get as close as I can to where it was um, and explain what happened. He was the other side of the city so uh, still but more in the city centre so I'm not going to walk for miles but I will uh, keep going along 
least it's not raining now. So as I'm walking to Godiva Street, I'm now by the cathedral. This is a view that's been the same for a few hundred years because the Golden Cross, one of the oldest pubs in the city, the courtroom's been there for a couple of hundred years. I think it's, I want to say it's Georgian rather than Victorian. I'm sure the plaque would tell me. But uh, yeah, there's a great scene from, from here in a 1945 Ministry of Works film uh, with Bill Owen, the guy from Last of the Summer Wine. That's how I know him anyway. He's obviously more famous than that. Um, where they're pointing out, oh, you know, he's just come back from the war and he's like, oh, the place hasn't changed much. And they're... He's with his wife and they're like, oh, we're going to get a new prefab house and life's going to be brilliant and Coventry's the place to be. And of course they're right, of course, but um, it's a good shot. Uh, I might uh, link to that. It's on YouTube, you can watch it. Um, so the story here uh, is obviously of uh, devastation. On the 14th of November 1940, the scene would have been quite different. Uh, they'd, uh, well, about 7 pm, I think, the first incendiaries hit the roof, and the provost and a couple of helpers were dashing about the roof trying to put fires out. But when there's three of you on a building this big, and it's had a few direct hits from incendiaries, and the water supply cuts out, uh, there's only one result. And unfortunately, people always go, well, why did the columns not stay? If they're only set on fire, you know, stone doesn't burn in the same way as wood. Uh, the reason being is that the Victorians, in their wisdom, had put steel supports on the columns to hold the roof up and keep the building secure. Obviously, steel, in extreme heat, um, pulled the whole thing down with it. Uh, so that's why everything fell in, rather than just the roof, and they could have just patched it up, but the whole thing fell in, because of the way they'd repaired the building. Um, Another point to note is the windows are blown out that side and they're not this side because the roof fell in at an angle and it hit that side and then the force blew the windows out. Um, and you see fragments of glass in the, in the windows but actually that's just Victorian glass. The medieval glass in the main panels were saved and Cov still has all of the medieval John Thornton glass um, stored at the moment. The fragments you see is Victorian later glass, so they're not too bothered about that. And there's the new cathedral poking through. So there you go, and you can see Trinity over there, uh, which survived. The team managed to put the fires out, it did get hit as well, but they saved it, which is good. So just leaving. Cathedral, there's obviously Golden Cross, it's looking like it's all the court. <laughs> Last public hanging in Warwickshire was here, I believe, in this courtyard where everyone gets smashed now. Um, somebody had their life ended uh, <laughs> right there. Uh, and there's Trinity, a better view of it um, with roof intact, and the new one looking glorious as ever. Basil Spence's finest moment. Uh, Trinity on its own is actually a wonderful building, it's well worth a look. Uh, the Doom painting is um, is fabulous. Um, I will head over to Godiva Street at some point. Due to the time, it may be dark soon, so I might not do it today, but the video will be completed. Fear not. So, I begin my grandfather's story of the Blitz here, uh, you would say at the Ring Road, but this is the city wall, the medieval city wall. Um, it runs quite a long way along it, it's probably the best bit uh, that's left other than Lady Herbert's uh, garden. And it runs along here, however, this wasn't the only thing. Uh, this medieval. So you can see the cathedral spire right in the middle of the shot there. Um, which shows you how close my granddad lived at the time. So this 
section here, the ring road did not exist, of course, a 60s and 70s creation. But this particular junction was built on a street. Uh, and the elephant building, as you can see in front of me, uh, was the junction of said street. Uh, there's still a junction just beyond it. Um, but on this street here, this sort of section, was Godiva Street. Uh, which is a... I'll try and maybe put some images into the video of what it looked like. Because um, it existed right up until the creation of the Ring Road. However, on 14th November 1940, uh, four of the houses were struck by bombs and destroyed. One of those was my granddad's house. It would have been around here. It's a really interesting junction actually, to be honest, but um, I'll pick this up again in a second. So from here you can see Graham Sutherland and some student at Calm and all this stuff wouldn't have been it other than the medieval wall over there. But this street would have existed, Godanova Street. Um, the Sherborne could have been seen from one end of it as well, because there was a flood here um, before the war. There's a good photo of the, the road flooding. So I'll walk through and, and I'll try and do a before and after of the junction for the road, because uh, the, the elephant is there now. But yeah, this would have been a street. Uh, it was quite, you know, a good hundred or so houses, uh, and I've, uh, four of them were destroyed, and my granddad was two years old under the stairs when uh, the back of the house got blown off and they were moved uh, later to Radford uh, and that's how all that happened his uh, dad, so my great granddad was a, a, a warden he was out and about on November the 14th trying to clear stuff and move you know, bodies and debris and all that kind of thing uh, and then he came back in the morning uh, to see what had happened to the street. I don't know what happened in the immediate aftermath. Uh, because, well, obviously, Grandad was two. His sisters were older. They were, I mean, they're in their 90s now, so they have a better memory of it. But I haven't thought to bother them to get the answers. I mean, obviously, I love the elephant building. It's right here, but this would have been the junction, pretty much. The road would have carried straight on. Just filming the floor as people walk by. So this is the end of Cock Street to Fairfax Street. And this road would have continued on over in this direction where the ring road now is. Uh, and this would have this was pretty similar in terms of layout, but these buildings obviously weren't here uh, at the ring road and the car park. In fact, none of this was here. In fact, no, there's not a pre-war building in this shot, to be honest. So there you go. That's the tallest building in the city now, Code. That's my story. And of course, there's the elephant building connected to the sports centre. Both now closed, possibly at risk, but who knows. It's a really interesting little section here, the way the road winds around. and you see the student calm and everything, it's all happening down here. And as you can see, the uh, James Starley building is gone. That's going to be an open park, which is, a, a, you know going to be quite nice because you can see Ellen Terry in the background there which is obviously a lovely building. That one is an interwar building, that's the, the first one that would have been here in the war that you can see. Everything else is afterwards. And I think that concludes the video of the Blitz and well, I'll walk across so you can see the cathedral which is at the end of this path. Uh, you can even see it through the legs. So I'm walking up at the back of Fairfax Street, where the swimming baths is. 
and you can see the new cathedral just poking off at the top there. These are all uni buildings, George Eliot. And our listed swimming baths connected to the elephant behind me. And you should be able to see the spire of uh, uh, poking up there. I'll pick it up in a second. So I'm picking this back up where Priory Hall used to be and there's the new cathedral right in front of me. And you can see that's where I was a second ago, where the co-building and down this stretch. As I turn up, you should see cathedral. There we are, old and new, stuck together. Um, I was thinking as I walked over, the only person I haven't mentioned that is, uh, is my grandma, who married my granddad, who I've just been talking about. Well, she was the youngest of the four grandparents that could have been here. And she was about six months old, and she lived in Kersley, out of the way. So I don't think she had any issues. And she had family in Newbegin up north, so she could have been up there. She wasn't amongst all this carnage anyway, like the others. Um, and of course University Square, where the hub is, Herbert, Alan Berry. It's got a good little square, but obviously at the time, devastation, fire, uh, no, not a place to be on November the 14th, anyway. I think that concludes the nonsense that I've been whispering on about for the last 15 minutes. If anyone has watched any of this, then gold star to you, and I'll buy you a coffee if uh, we interact on a regular basis.